Okay, so this video is meant to introduce you to the idea of lenses. And what a lens is, it's a curved piece of glass or plastic that is meant to bend light in a specific manner. And how it, the pattern with which it bends the light depends on the shape of the lens. So if you have a lens that is really curved, you're going to have a certain amount of bending occur. If you have a lens made of glass versus if you have a lens made of plastic, you're going to have a certain amount of bending occur. And those nuances are reflected in what's called the focal length. So the focal length is a characteristic of a lens. that determines how much bending occurs. And it depends on what the lens is made up of, if it's glass, plastic, some composite material, and it also depends on the curvature of the lens, and it also depends on the thickness of the lens. Okay. So we're gonna look at initially two types of lenses. The first lens is called a converging lens. And a converging lens, another name for a converging lens, is a convex lens. And a converging lens is curved out on both sides. So it looks like this magnifying glass is essentially a converging lens. And a converging lens, what happens is when parallel rays of light hit a converging lens, the rays bend towards the focal point of the lens. So when parallel rays of light strike a converging lens, the light rays bend to focus at a particular point, at, at the focal point. To, we'll say, come together at the focal point. So if you had a converging lens and you had a bunch of light rays that were parallel to each other, and they hit the lens, they would bend such that they all would meet at the same point, and that point would be the focal point of that lens. So converging lenses converge light rays to a given point. The other kind of lens we are going to look at is a diverging lens. It's kind of the opposite. So a diverging lens, another name for it is a concave lens. And this lens is curved inwards on both sides. And for this lens, when parallel rays of light strike this lens, the light rays uh, diverge from the focal point. So what this looks like, a diverging lens, it's caved in on both sides. So kind of looks like that. And if you were to have parallel rays of light strike this lens, the light rays diverge away from a given point. And that given point appears to be right here, like behind the lens. So like right here would be the focal point of the diverging lens. 
the focal point's on a different side, and we'll get into what that does in terms of the mathematics of it. We'll eventually see that for a converging lens, the focal point is positive, and for a con or for a diverging lens, the focal point is negative, and that definitely affects the mathematics of how we solve for where an image would appear, etc. Okay, so this is meant to explain to you how it is that light passes through different kinds of lenses. I'm going to show you how it is that light passes through a convex lens. So the first thing is just kind of information, and I'm going to have you pause the video and just jot down um, how light bends for these three particular rays. Remember that there are thousands of light rays that can pass through a lens. We're only going to investigate three of them, the three that are the easiest to draw, and they're the parallel ray, the central ray, and the focal ray. So go ahead, take a moment, pause the video, write down each of these rays, um, and then once you've done that, play the video again, and we'll move on to the actual drawings. Okay, so now that you have all of those rays and just the, the nuances of them, we're going to actually model them out. So just like we have done in the past, I want you to draw out, um, and again, we're on the space, because remember, this is going to be your reference. Go ahead and draw out a principal axis with a convex lens, and a convex lens is curved out on both sides, and then two focal points on either side. Now, the reason a lens has two focal points is there's two points of curvature, um, so we're going to see how that's going to affect, it's going to be a bit different than it, it would be for a mirror. And please make sure to make these symmetric. So on my board, I made these 15 centimeters away, that's obviously too much for your paper. So maybe make them between 5 and 10 centimeters away from the center of your lens. And we're going to have an object, so I'm going to go ahead and put my object over here. And we're going to go ahead and just model these three different rays. So we're going to start off with the parallel ray. And it says the parallel ray, the incident ray, is parallel to the axis, hits the lens, and passes through the focus on the other side. It's going to pass through this focus. So we'll start off with having our ray be parallel to the lens. And because lenses can be drawn on all kinds of thicknesses, for a lens, you're always going to take it to the very center point of your lens. Um, even though the bending does occur immediately when it hits the lens, for our drawing purposes, we're just going to take it to the center point. So we take it to that center point, and when it hits the center point, then we're going to have it pass through the focal point. Okay? So that's our parallel ray. Now, the second ray that we have is the central ray. And let me just move this down so you can see it again in just words. So central ray, the incident ray passes through the center of the lens and keeps on going. This is actually the easiest ray to draw. Blue marker out. This will be the easiest one. You're just going to line up the top of your object to the center of your lens and then just keep on extending that line. Now, technically, two rays, um, where they intersect, gives you the point where you're going to have an image created. It helps to draw three rays, just to make sure we're doing our drawings accurately. So the last ray is the focal ray. And again, let's just kind of look and see what the notes on that says. It says, uh, for focal ray, the incident ray passes through the focal point on the object side, hits the lens, and moves parallel to the axis. So what that looks like here is that it's going to go from my object, pass through the focal point on the object side, hit the lens, and go parallel. And we can kind of see how that's going to work out. And if you've done your drawing accurately, um, all of your rays should intersect at the same point. Okay? So right here at this point of intersection, that's where I would have an image being formed, and so I would draw light image, an upside down arrow. So you need to make sure that when you're doing a ray drawing, you've got um, at least two rays, three rays to kind of help make sure you're minimizing the error, but then also you've included the image. And, and so the result is that we get an upside down image when we are looking through a convex lens. Okay. 
Okay, so what we're going to do now is look at um, the ray drawings for a concave lens. So just as we did earlier, um, I would like you to write down the ray diagrams for the concave lens. A concave lens is the diverging lens. It's the kind of lens where it's caved in on both sides. And um, go ahead and draw, write these down, parallel ray, central ray, focal ray. Pause the video um, so that we get all this down and then I'm going to model it and show you how you would actually draw the rays. Okay, so now that you have these written down in your notes, um, we're going to do the same thing we've done in the past. We're going to model it with a drawing. So go ahead and have a principal axis. Here's your concave lens. It's caved in on both sides. And again, we're going to have two focal points. Um, and please make them symmetric to the center of your lens, um, anywhere between 5 and 10 centimeters away on your paper. Okay? And again, we'll start off with an object. So I'm going to start with my parallel ray, and it says for my parallel ray, the incident ray is parallel to the axis. Um, it's going to hit the lens and refracts as if it's coming from the focus on, oopsies, on the object side. So this one's a little tricky. Um, remember that these types of lenses spread light out, and so that'll kind of be evident as we draw. So the first part's pretty straightforward. It's going to be parallel. And again, remember, um, go ahead and take your rays to the center of your lens. That's when we're going to start seeing the bending occur. And this part, it hits the lens, and it's going to refract as if it's coming from the focus on the object side. So it's going to refract as if it's coming from this point right here, this focal point. So when you go ahead and line up your ruler, you're going to line it up with that focal point. And I'm just going to draw a dashed line to show where that's coming from. I would like you to draw that dashed line as well because it's going to be useful for us when we look at our virtual image. Okay? Now, the second ray is the same as it was for the convex lens. It's the central ray, and I'm just going to diagram it as green. Again, just so you can see it here. Central ray, this is the incident ray that passes through the center of the lens and just keeps on going. So it's one of the easiest rays to draw. We're just going to line up the top of our object to the center of our lens. And just keep on going. Okay, the third ray. The third ray is definitely the trickiest, just like it was tricky with uh, convex mirrors. Um, let's just kind of go through it. It says that the focal ray, the incident ray, is angled as if it would pass to the focus, focal point on the image side, hits the lens, and was parallel to the axis. So for this ray, we kind of have to project where it's going to go. So it's going to be angled a little bit differently. It's going to move as if it's going to hit this point there. So it's gonna, you're going to line it up, the top of your object, to that point. And again, I'm just going to project it with a dashed line so you can see like that's where I got that angle from. Okay. So the focal ray starts from your object, moves as if it's going to pass that point, but when it hits the lens, instead it goes parallel. So, it looks like that. Now, something to note with diverging lenses, diverging lenses always produce virtual images. So, oh, this is a wobbly board. So, diverging lenses produce virtual images and we saw that with diverging mirrors okay so when they're by themselves if you have a concave lens by itself 
it's going to give you a virtual image. And so that means you need to project the refracted rays backwards. Okay. So this should be somewhat familiar to you. Um, so in terms of projecting the refracted rays backwards, the refracted rays are the rays on this side. They're the ones that have already gone through the lens. So this refracted ray is actually already projected backwards with this red dash. Um, the green refracted ray is also already projected backwards because it's just that straight shot. So the only one we really have to project backwards is this focal ray. And when I project that one backwards, I'm projecting this parallel line. You can see that they do all intersect right here. And that would be my image, okay? So that would be my virtual image. So concave lenses, diverging lenses by themselves will always give you virtual images. You'll always have to project them backwards. Now, these are the rays, and along with the rays, the rays are a, a graphical model to show us how the light bends. We still are going to have the mathematical model as well. And so the mathematical model is called the thin lens equation. And it's very familiar to you. The thin lens equation is identical to the mirror equation in that it's 1 over the focal length is equal to 1 over DO plus 1 over DI. So that hasn't changed. And again, this is an inverse format. You could also write this as F inverse equals DO inverse plus DI inverse. That's the same. And the magnification factor is, in fact, the same. We're still going to have the magnification factor would be equal to negative di over do, and it's also equal to hi over ho. So equation-wise, that's the same. Now, a thing to note about the focal lengths is that the focal lengths have an opposite behavior as mirrors do in that convex lenses have positive focal lengths because it's convex lenses that give us real images and concave lenses have negative focal lengths and concave lenses are going to give us virtual images. So the same relationship is true with the real versus the virtual images. Real images are going to be upside down, and they are going to have a positive DI, and virtual images are going to be right side up, and when you calculate out the DI, it comes out to be a negative DI. And so we saw that relationship with mirrors as well. So when we get back to class, um, we will practice applying these equations to um, some different problems.